then the logistical issues this world is paying current is important. Look at the corridor. Take it back into your boardrooms, into your decision uh, places, points. What is this corridor? First, I said already, we are bound together. This corridor is crucial, not just to Zambia, but to Congo, dear, to uh, hang on, the eastern part of Angola. The eastern part of Angola. I was in Angola a month ago and we discussed the issues around how difficult it is for the capital in Rwanda along, as you see, this way? Yeah. yeah. Along the sea, the ocean, to our Zambia Angola border in a place called Ijimbe. It's the direct opposite. The place called Kamapan. I know my High Commissioner, who I didn't recognize, well recognized, sir, and all the diplomats that are here, partners of ours, to Kamapan. He and I have been to all those places together to move in this country together. Um, to move to Yambesh. Now, clearly the Angolan colleagues were saying, HH, we can't service those areas from Rwanda. Can you service them for us? Now, it means this Wobbish Bay route is bigger and more important than maybe we imagine. Because you are neighbors with Angola here, isn't it? You are neighbors. But you assume that the needs of Angola is through your neighborhood there. Angola is huge. The needs of Angola in the east are better service from Zambia. And believe it, from Wabish Bay Corridor. Yet you are next to each other. So I would like you to apply your minds in that way. What can we do to this corridor? What is standing in the way of what Minister was saying? I agree with you. 100%. Track the route. A friend of mine burst in Johannesburg because he's a friend, because we share a vision of unlocking Africa and taking out the embarrassment Africa suffers at the global stage every time. When you find poor people. Before anyone answers that question, I start looking for a place to hide. <laughs> Where do you find poor people? Here. Why do you find poor people in the rich country? from the richest. It's just the way we do things. We don't do them properly. When we took office in Zambia, yes, uh, young people call me Bali then. They say, oh, Bali will fix it. So I come into office, and then a week later they say, Bali, we're waiting for you to fix it. I said, wait, there's a system here. We must be methodical, we must be organized. And three months later, they were posting on social media, ah, this methodical thing does, it's not working. <laughs> later on, they saw 30,000 teachers, they saw our currency stabilizing, they saw inflation coming down, they saw interest rates coming down, pulling interest rates down, working with the banks. They basically began to see revenues now going where they should go, by taking them away from wastage. Now, it's systems, it's processes, where is it? It's calculations. Calculator boy, they used to call me in the opposition, as a way of demeaning me, they say, ah, that calculator boy can never run a country. <laughs> but I say, you do need to calculate things properly. So, you business people and us, must calculate together just this route, this one is very correct, and take it where it really goes, not what you think, where you think it goes, but where the goods from here. You're taking me there, isn't it? You're taking me there. Where the goods end up from this port. Isolate that route, 
then we must say, these are the challenges on this road. And when we unlock these challenges, we are going to save millions, actually billions, of dollars. So, now, whose jurisdiction is challenge one? Which government, which country, which geography is challenge one most prevalent? That's the choice I made as I was thinking this morning. How relevant will I be this morning? This is the emphasis I want to make. Don't, don't, don't start by saying governments are not working. Start by saying, I face problems there. And it takes me longer to, for my truck to do a round trip. Again, we were chatting in the side room that for the scenes of my past as a young business person, I did venture in working on this route to extract revenues. And one of our challenges then was re return loss. As simple as that, as basic as it is ignored, it's so important that the truck must move from one location in Katanga, for example, through Zambia, Katima, and up to here, fully loaded. And back, it must be fully loaded. Any business person knows that that has an impact on the revenue or income statement. There's no question about it. Do we tend to ignore these things? So, return loads was an issue. And my two colleagues there tell me that it's improved greatly. So I said, for me, in my methodical way, I tick that box. Anyway, there's something good that is happening. Because businesses must be viable. So businesses must be viable. If they are not viable, they will be of no value to anyone, not just to shareholders and employees, but there will be no value to society. Sooner or later, they will pack and go into something. So our job as governments, two ministers, is to make, to facilitate businesses to be viable. Then we will extract what we want from them. So they can employ more people. So they can buy something from someone in the economy, intra economic transaction. So they can pay their bills. So they can add revenue to our treasury. Only if they buy. And we assume they're honest. We assume they're honest. We want to see businesses that take that overall responsibility to deliver to shareholders, to deliver to the wider stakeholders, including treasury income. So we can then actualize the one border stop. One border stop. One, what do we call it? Yeah, one stop board. One stop board. Quicker movements. Drivers must be safe. I'm a friend of drivers. Some of the people who help us win the election in the manner we want it uh, by a landslide. It was drivers moving on this corridor. And we promised them that we will unlock the challenges that they are facing. So, in as much as you are the business owner, the drivers have their own story. Please talk to them. Talk to them. Don't ignore them. Who moves those tonnages? Who do you give responsibility for valuable goods to move to the customer? It is a drive. Talk to drivers. Two colleagues there, get to interact with your workers, get to interact with the drivers, and they will tell you what we need to do to unlock this corridor. Simple as it is.
And sometimes the simple things is what we want to deal with first. I've only talked of the total route, one stop border post. Why in our country at Kasumbale Sabo, Zambia Congo? We cannot get Namibia right, we cannot get Zambia right, and Congo is not right. Now it is for you to isolate, I hang around here a little bit, isolate this road and say, remember I said jurisdiction, in which jurisdiction are these problems happening? Namibia, starting from here, onto our border, what should we do? The investments required there, we isolate those. And then security, safety, security, convenience. In his constituents, this is your counterpart, Minister of Commerce, is, uh, is, comes from the constituents called Chingora, which is on the carpet. And he's not even on the board. The next constituent is Chilabombo, where the minister, our Minister of Mines comes from. And sometimes the queue of trucks from this port, your trucks, will be one week, two weeks at the Zambia Congo border. Now, you can say the things you want to say to each other here. We can't unlock that problem. We are loading on your costs. We're taking away your margins, your revenues, and your ability to expand. Because we want you to expand. Now, this is what the president said yesterday. This third generation of African leaders understand that and they stand with you to deal with those issues. Because some of the issues are not yours. It's for government, government to deal with. He was, the queue of trucks sometimes go up to his constituents. That's the message I wanted to deliver. From the border to another constituents. And every now and then the issue is there. So yes, the infrastructure is important. We agree. But there are also hard policy decisions we must make as governments. And that's where you now come in. Where do you come? You're the one who should say, we don't like that at Katimamu. <coughs> we don't like that at the port. We don't like that at Kasumbalesa, Congo, Zambia. You. Then together we sit in a room after this conference. They develop the Zambia Development Agents, investment promotions in Zambia, here, this community, business community, these leaders, these ministers. Okay, I dare say these two presidents that have spoken to you, we are there. But let's stop the African cancer of generalities. Let's talk specifics. I think it will be helpful to this Switex. Post your meetings will be helpful if we can walk out of here with those specifics around important routes, assets like the World Fisk Bank Corridor. Then if we do our part, which we will, we should, we have no choice, remember? We can't avoid each other. Some things are not optional. They are mandatory. This is, these are issues that are mandatory to any leader that wants to better the lives of the people that put them in office like I do. These are the mundane things. These are the bread and butter issues. I should have said the bread and honey issues. <laughs> Why not? So, I think, colleagues, by illustrating the corridor, by saying what I've said, there it applies now to sectoral issues, other sectors. Tourism. The numbers that we've heard, I don't even want to repeat. If I asked you of a small job, not economy, of a European country. You do more business with those European countries than you do with us. Why? Why? For my nephew to look after his Namibian 
wife. He must have an opportunity in the church of Paso to do business. So, other young Namibian girls will say, I want to marry Zami. Because they are good husbands. But how will he be a good husband if most of the business is done with Europe? You do most of the business with Europe. We do most of the business with Europe. Why don't we do more business with each other? So take that analysis again. What are we supposed to do? We know we have uh, issues of, uh, you know, SACO. We have issues of SADC. We have issues of AU. EU, AU. But charity begins at home. You, the business houses, must do deliver more business with each other. Why don't you have shared risks? Why don't you have shared risks? So that it's easier for you to make logical decisions to increase trade between Namibia and um, Anzal. What do I mean? When you're looking for partners from Europe, from China, from America, before you look for partners from Zambia and Namibia, Look for Namibian partners first. And partnership is broader. Governmental responsibilities. Zambian look for Zambian partners first. Your next step is to look for Namibian partners. Zambian partners. Then together you can now walk to European partners, to American partners, to Chinese partners. For what? Two fundamental things. Please, it's how my brain works. It, it, it ties it quite a couple of things at the same time. There, what would you be looking for? Because the two of you have the natural resource in government. You'll be looking for two fundamental things as you walk to China and America or indeed another country. What are these two fundamental things? Capital. Beyond what we have. Beyond our capacity to mobilize capital in the two countries. And our region. You'll be looking for capital. You'll be looking for the next issue is technology. Technical know-how. Mainly. And technology here, technical know-how, is not just the IT best. You're also looking for markets, knowledge of markets, access to markets. So then you have a partnership that's complete. And it will help grow madam. These numbers I don't want to repeat. And some of the things you bring in here, you bring them from too far away. Vegetables. Mm. I'm noisy a little bit, so I was talking to people around who work around there where you put me. Where do you buy these vegetables? They give me an answer. They want to repeat it. Mm -hmm. Why so far? Why not get more fresher vegetables just across the Zambezi? Some rigidities we need to, you to isolate today and further on after today. Check with those issues. I have given you the theme of specificity. Let me return to tourism. We have a lot in common. Let us develop common packages, a tourist package that takes a tourist here, into Okabango, into Victoria Falls, into other, a package. Let's talk about those issues. Thank you for talking about the airline. Again, to come here, we have to go to certain other far away places. Overfly each other <laughs> and come back. Is it that we, as Africans, we have too much time on our on our laps? What, what is it? I loved traveling when I was young. Yesterday I told you yesterday we were myself when I was twenty-seven. Actually, I lie a bit about that issue. As a student, undergraduate student. I used to trade during holidays to raise my own money. 
and I'll go to Katima Mliro, just across there, by bus. And buy certain wares, take home. I knew what was short in short supply. And made a bit of, in Zambia, there's a linga franca, there's corruption in the last 10 years was defined as kasam fee. <laughs> in addition to the price, you pay kasam fee. <laughs> terrible, terrible stuff. And we're, we're working on that, breaking it down. Yeah. Of course, you hear complaints, we're breaking it down because it's, it's, it's stealing from businesses. Out of telling from the people. So my understanding of Kasamfi was to work harder myself and make that Kasamfi. But over years in Zambia, Madam Minister, Kasamfi meant stealing from the taxpayer. No, that's not what we seek by the Bible school. Extravagance. Everyone wants a VX. Everybody. I'm sure my, one of my videos went viral. Everybody. The mayor wants a VX, the deputy mayor wants a VX, the town clerk wants a VX. So if you will laugh for a VX, when you go and cut your own check and buy one for yourself, leave the taxpayer's money. So we can use it to do that one stop order post. We need that money. So we can improve the roads, so we can, you know, have the technology, like I said yesterday, to see what is coming onto the board. Collectively, this group here must say, corruption is not acceptable. Because how do people in the public sector push for something? Who gives them something? It's you. It's you. It's we in business. So if we lock it out there, we lock it out from the government side, we lock it out by, you know, pushing it out in many ways, then we will save that money and put it where it should go. So, tourism is important to us. Please, if you don't do it in this hall, find time, checklist how you are going to look at sectors. Energy, we've talked about it a lot. But tourism, um, I've been in that little business for a long time, 27 years. Again, I was a young guy when I went in there. We understand the issues there. We can, we were always working in Zambia. We want the tourist numbers to increase. I'm sure you have heard, my chair will tell you that in this budget, next budget, which will be our second budget as a country, First budget, I couldn't convince my ministers. They asked me too many questions. No, what would it is? You want to? This year we've removed the visa fees. There's no visa fee. So the tourists can come. It is those issues. Now we're talking about tourism. Yes, the product we have. The package we have. Namibia, Botswana, Zambia. We have the package. We have the attractions. But why are the numbers low? Small, little, silly things. I'm sorry for using that word. Visa fees. And someone was telling me, ah, oh, you know, it changed. It's not right. Because you're going to bring illegals here. I said, no, illegal immigrants, that's a separate issue. It, it can be dealt with in a different way. Now, I don't have to bang on this issue. You should be banging on to us, the government. Because you want volumes, you want bed nights, you want revenue from the restaurants, from the bar, for those who enjoy that stuff. <laughs> but we want the money to outdoor. It's the numbers go up, volumes go up, occupancies go up. Then you can run a good business, and then you meet your obligations to the treasury. So we must make it easier for you to meet your obligations to your shareholders and the treasury and the workers and the treasury. I thought these are the slant that I, I really don't want to go on. This is a slant that I would like to push this expo to get to. On the tourism side, what do you want us to unlock? What are those issues? 
What are those issues? Again, back to your boardrooms. What is challenging you there? What is causing you not to expand? What is creating, you know, taking away your profitability? What is it? Tell us. Those that are within your domain, deal with it. Those that are with the domain of these ministers and these presidents, we shall do them. You have a partner in us. You haven't heard me. You have a partner in us. We don't have adversaries. We are looking for the same things. As you know that tourism is one of the great job creators. Hmm? Very important. So, I think I have given you what I thought would be of value to this expo. Talking to captains of industry, talking to ministers, talking to investment promotion agencies, talking to, I hope there are some regulators. In our country, first year in office, as I said yesterday, we are now in office one year and close to two months. We're just under two, one year, two months. So the first year was dedicated to saying, how did we allow the economy to plummet, to go down? What is it that we were doing? I knew from outside as a business. Now I'm, in, I'm as a business person. Now I'm inside. I said, let me confirm what I thought was wrong. And I did confirm, bingo. Bingo. So now we are restoring credibility of our country in terms of leadership management. Raining in on the debt, raining in on corruption, raining in on the extravagance, raining in on so many things that were taking revenue away from growth. This year, I'm talking about Zambia now, this year we're raining in on breaking the rigidities that are slowing the economy and business and trade and investment down. This second year in office, I've said to my colleagues in cabinet. But we can't do that on our own without him and the business people telling us, no, 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 you, you're targeting the wrong things. It is these things that are creating rigidities. That's what we're doing, Minister. We cannot do it on our own. We will have to do it with industry because they are the ones who have suffered in the last years. So they tell us now back home, that issue HH, that issue body, that issue, can you fix it? Yes, we'll fix it. And the rest will happen. The assumption being Sataris Peribus, other things being equal. When we do these things, then the economy will start moving. Then we now say, what are we going to do to unlock regional related issues? I've already talked about it. In this corridor, tourism, all of that. Energy, what, what can we share together? This is the spirit of the new leadership that, for me, an African leader coming now, who's been embarrassed as a student in Europe. I detested people saying, talking about, you know, uh, I did finance, trade, stuff like that. And when they start talking about lack of reliability, credit worthness, every time the examples were African examples, I said, you guys, why are you using African examples? That time I was, I was being irritated. Now, Years in business and now here. That is right. The irritation is here. Let's help ourselves to help our people, give our people dignity when they are out there in the world looking for business so they can be respected. There's nothing <laughs> sweet about it. But also colleagues, investors from outside of the continent. Let's trade on fair terms. Let's have market access. I am saying what I'm saying because I'm, I understand there's also some streaming going on here. We threaten nobody. When we meet like this, we threaten nobody in Europe or in America or in China. What we say, capital should be fairly priced.
we need survival. We need to bring it to the table. Technology, we must get the best, not the second fiddle. Then we have two partners. And the benefits cut across nationality. They cut across one business. The benefits will be obvious. Much quicker than we expect. I tell the people of Zambia, we are sitting on the edge of success and the revolution. But Zambians must come along. Zambians can come along, must come along. Namibians must come along. Must come along. <laughs> Investors must come along. I said it yesterday. Your best insurance policy against expropriation is working with local partners. That's your best insurance policy against expropriation. Because when H is no longer there, when President Gengob is no longer there, anyone who wants to upset the status quo that adds value to a Zambian, to a Namibian life, quality of life, the people to resist first will be Namibian partners. It will be Zambian partners. So at the end of the day, it will no longer them and us, or them against us. It is us all the time. I thought this message would provoke this expo. That's what I thought. I don't want to talk about electricity, you know it, it's Monday. I don't want to talk about, uh, what am I going to say about food? Everyone needs to eat. But how do we make electricity available? How do we make food available? How do we make our roots efficient? That's what I thought would be of value to this expo. So do your part, we'll do our part. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Your Excellency. I think, um, please be seated. I think for us, we all want to listen to you for the whole day. Your Excellency. <laughs> I wish I could actually steal the time. <laughs> um, but definitely, uh, better days are coming. We will have uh, more engagements, particularly in the forum that we are busy uh, arranging in the pipeline. And I hope we can actually engage more. Please, let's give His Excellency another round of applause. <laughs> Please forgive me that we had to put you under very tight schedule because you came. We still have another week, a bit of some activities to do. A bit of announcements now. What will happen? We will go for a short break. Uh, but maybe before I do that, just to extend our appreciation to His Excellency for the time that he has really been with us. Um, he has to actually. Um, make sure that the program is within, we'll catch up with the time of the program as well, for the business people. Appreciate you, our Honorable Minister of Trade, for always being very supportive of the Chamber, of the business community, and really for making time to be with us here. The Honorable Minister of Trade from the Republic of Zambia, I have seen a bit of your clips on YouTube, and um, I think we need to engage more with you as well. Thank you so much for your time. Your Excellency, Air Commissioner of Zambia, you've really been a very strong support system from day one. We want to appreciate you so much as well. Thank you for your team. Um, Mr. Halwamba. 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 Day, Janai. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know you missed out on the cream of the cream yesterday, but I uh, caught up today with us, and I hope you will have more time to also engage with your counterparts from the investment board that are here. P.S. The P.S. is, thank you so much. You're always directing, making sure that I get things in order. As well. You know, in the middle of all these things, when you make mistakes, nobody gets to see that, and they only see perfection, but there's a lot that goes around. <laughs> and I said, in the process, you learn a lot, so thank you so much. Um, we have the panelists that are here that will be 
getting that in the second session because of time. We want us to make sure that we just break for tea and then we come back for the panel discussions. I just want to appreciate the panelists that are here. Maybe if you can just raise so that I see that you're definitely in the room. <laughs> All the panelists, moderators that are here, please raise. Yo. Okay, so your excellences, your Mr. Danny Mayer there, he's actually a, a social entrepreneur. He has lived in Zimbabwe and Zambia and has assisted a lot of chambers actually to get in order. He is, we call him the father of